Dunge Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and today I'm going to be talking about the debut album from Jason Ross, 1000 Faces. Jason Ross is an American melodic EDM DJ and producer based in the City of Angels. He's a producer I've come to admire a lot in the last couple years following the release of his collaboration with Seven Lions and Paul Meany. Higher Love, which I'm sure is how a lot of Ross's current fandom found him to begin with. Uh, when the song released, it you know, reached a level of popularity that really none of his songs did prior to that. Now, I personally don't really listen to a ton of Anjuna Beats releases beyond that of, of course, Above and Beyond. Um, so the reason this song really caught my eye to begin with was not only because it was a return to Anjuna Beats for Seven Lions, but because Paul Meany's name was attached to it, and I myself have enjoyed a good mute math tune or two. Had Higher Love not had those two names attached to it, I admittedly probably would have never listened to it, but I'm very thankful that it did because I ended up enjoying the song, uh, a lot. Being a very mystical, melodic, sparkling, progressive trance track with some great vocals felt like a triumphant return to Seven Lions roots while also featuring some of his signature dubstep elements. And being that Jason Ross co-produced Higher Love, I won't say it absolutely sparked this like obsession with his music for me, but uh, it definitely marked him as an artist to look out for. And from that point, I thoroughly enjoyed digging into some of his newer releases, as well as his older stuff on Anjuna Beats, songs like Atlas, Cairo, Amon and Meta with Elon Bluestone, Through It All, East of Eden, uh, his remix of Illenium's Needed You was one of my favorites off of that remix package. Of course, I've never been the absolute biggest fan of his music or anything like that. I mean, there's still a good chunk of his catalog that I haven't even dove into at this point. But I definitely have come to appreciate Jason Ross as one of the more standout names in the progressive trance scene. He makes big, emotional, chord-driven trance music that doesn't sound too cheesy or over the top. His stuff wasn't the most out there or anything like that, but I feel like it did have a sense of identity to it. While I had hoped he would do a more serious multi-track project centered around his progressive trance sound following the release, of Higher Love, I was pretty happy with Rooms. An EP released through Anjuna Beats that, in my opinion, did a pretty good job of showcasing each corner of Ross's production talents, from more progressive stuff to more ambient and down-tempo. There's even some pop influence stuff and some psytrance. The EP pretty much did everything a debut album should, and had it been a few tracks longer, it could have been classified as such. So of course, when Ross's official debut album was announced for release on Ophelia Records, Seven Lions label, I had reason to be excited about it. As I've mentioned in past videos, I'm definitely a fan of what Seven Lions is doing with Ophelia in that he's giving all these different talents in the melodic dubstep scene a proper platform to put out their music on. I feel like acts such as Trivecta, Last Heroes, and Crystal Skies have been somewhat lost in the void the last few years, really without the proper label to be putting out their stuff, and Ophelia has has given them all a home to connect with an audience. Given that all of their signature sounds more or less tie back into the influence of Seven Lions, that platform makes sense for them. Jason Ross, on the other hand, doesn't really make as much sense on the Ophelia lineup in my mind because uh, his sound is so rooted in trance music. I mean, the guy had been making progressive trance for like a solid four years before he went anywhere near dubstep. However, considering Ross's skill set is almost as varied as the label head himself, I was excited to see how this album would turn out. I had hoped this album would provide a somewhat diverse track list, maybe a couple dubstep songs and a couple songs kind of going in new experimental directions, but overall I had hoped that 
his progressive trance sound would kind of be at the core of this project, considering it's his debut album. However, 1000 Faces does not do that. In fact, it kind of takes everything that I had hoped this album would be and uh, runs in the opposite direction, as not only does this album stray quite a ways from the signature sound that Jason Ross previously established, it's about as melodic dubstep as a melodic dubstep album can be. Now, before I dig into this album, I would like to establish that I by no means am a trance purist, and I also have nothing against artists that I like taking a creative new direction with their music, kind of doing something unexpected. I think there was a lot of confusion on that topic with my Armin Van Buren balance review. Heck, one of my all-time favorites is Porter Robinson's Worlds, which was a massive deviation from his signature style, and I really liked his electro stuff. What I do not like is when artists use their talent to so clearly pander to specific audiences. Copying almost verbatim what other artists have already done and trying to win over some of their fans instead of experimenting and mixing genres together and creating their own fan base. Unfortunately, 1000 Faces falls in the first of those two categories with almost no sense of a unique experience throughout the project. In fact, if someone would have played this album for me completely blind and told me it was a Seven Lions album, I probably would have believed them. It's like Jason looked into his stats one day and was like, hmm, you know, Ocean and Higher Love are the two songs of mine that are really doing the best on streaming platforms. Maybe I should just make stuff like that from now on. Here's the thing. The reason why I personally really liked Jason Ross being a part of the Seven Lions Posse is because he provided some variation to his lineups and performed some interesting back-to-backs with Seven Lions. I liked the fact that he fit into those lineups without stylistically sounding identical to every other name in melodic dubstep. I think 1000 Faces could have been a really cool album, maybe if it was more collaboration centric, combining the things that make him unique with the things that make the other Ophelia guys distinct from each other. But instead we get a 10 track album that panders about as hard as it possibly can to this audience of people who just like the trend of melodic dubstep rather than the experimentation it originally stood for. This album just sounds like such an obvious blend between Seven Lions, Dabin, Elenium, and William Black, and it uses pretty much all the same vocalists you'd expect to find in songs by those artists. Fiora, Dylan Matthew, Dia Frampton, Rory, Run, uh, Emily Brandt. And of course, I'm not blaming this album's issues on the vocalists, they're just doing their job, showing up, recording a top line, getting their paycheck, that's pretty much it. But a lot of these vocals are just flat and passionless. They really just feel like top lines and nothing much more. There doesn't seem to be any kind of story or concept guiding this album together. There's an intro, but it's almost like completely pointless because it doesn't really segue into the second track at all and uh, it, it doesn't really introduce any of the themes of the album or anything like that. Overall, this album is just a very frustrating listen for me, though I will say there are a few key things about it that prevent me from, you know, just throwing my phone out the car window. There are several tracks on this album that do well to break up the ironic monotony of the continuous melodic dubstep happening throughout the project, the first of which is the empowering trance tune with Rory, Chains. This is probably my favorite song on the entire album, and not even because it's like the most amazing trance song ever or anything like that, but uh, mostly because Roxanne Emery can do no wrong when it comes to vocals, apparently. Her voice fits perfectly over the song's instrument instrumental, really driving that energy and emotion the song has. And yeah, after a pretty lackluster intro and three straight tracks of unwarranted melodic dubstep, uh, 
Chains definitely serves as a breath of fresh air. Leave Me to Wonder is another cool one that breaks up that monotony a little bit with a little bit more of a down-tempo beat. Even though it does have some kind of dubstepy elements to it, it's definitely more reserved and a, a more unique cut than the majority of the album, though I don't think Fiora's vocals are quite as great or as fitting as they have been in the past, even on When the Night Falls. As big of a fan as I am of Fiora's voice, uh, I almost think I would have preferred this song as like a short instrumental interlude. And then immediately following Leave Me to Wonder, we get the collaboration with Seven Lions, Known You Before, which is uh, ironically probably the least Seven Lions sounding song on the entire album. I do like this one a lot though, probably not quite as much as Chains, but I do like how it kind of goes for that more trancey sound and a, a little bit more of a kind of dark and heavy context, whereas Chains was a little bit more bright and energetic. And Emily Brandt's vocals are absolutely on point here. I think the style that she sings in on this song uh, fits much better, um, you know, over a track like this than something like, let's say, Lost by Elenium. Though I do feel the song runs its course a little bit too fast, I could have definitely taken another couple minutes of this song with some different switch-ups. The hard drop in this song as well kind of throws me off, not because I don't like the idea behind it of, you know, having that hard electro kind of sound to it coming in right after the first drop, but um, it, maybe it's something in the mixing or something like that. It just sounds a bit off and there's really not much else that I can honestly say I really liked about this album. Like I already mentioned on When the Night Falls, I think Fiora's vocals are really solid but for a majority of this album we're getting very run-of-the-mill forgettable melodic dubstep. I'd say the one thing that really separates Jason Ross's brand of melodic dubstep from the rest of his contemporaries is that he uses a somewhat unique lead. It kind of sounds like almost nasally and you can recognize that same lead in a few different tracks on this album but that really isn't enough to pique my interest i mean sure maybe if there were only a couple melodic dubstep songs on the album i could you know get into it a little even even if it's not the most unique kind of melodic dubstep ever but it's like so much of this album has that same exact sound and it's not even original to Jason Ross. Like I mentioned before I was and somewhat still am excited about what Seven Lions is doing with Ophelia but I think this album showcases that the label does have some glaring issues that need to be fixed. Yes it is good that all of these talented melodic dubstep producers have a home for their music and a team that supports them, but when veering away from the norm becomes discouraged and when artists like Jason Ross feel like they can't do anything but melodic dubstep, uh, that's where the genre dies. I think it's nothing short of a miracle that melodic dubstep is where it is right now, and in my book we have Illenium to thank for that because he, you know, used those influences and decided to flip them in a new direction. But if everyone's just going to be another Seven Lions, then this genre really has no way to move forward. With all of that being said, I sincerely wish Jason the best. If he's going to continue down this melodic dubstep route, long term. I definitely have no problem with that, but I'd like to see him move in a direction that's more unique to him and matches his skill level rather than just emulating everybody that's around him, because I genuinely think he's better than that. And if he does choose to keep making this style of music to keep sounding like everybody else in this genre, you know, some people might follow him, but I don't think I'm going to. For 1,000 Faces, I am personally feeling a strong 3.5 to a light 4 out of 10. As always, if you guys want to listen to this album for yourselves, I have the Spotify link down in the description below. And if you've already listened to the album, make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more content like it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.